Have you ever gone to a comic book store wanting to start collecting comics but don't know exactly where to start? What is up there my fellow geeks? Welcome back to my channel. And today's video is not going to be Pokemon or anything like that. What it's going to be today is we're going to go over comic book collecting as you saw a moment ago. So you go into a comic book store, you want to get into comic books, but you don't know exactly what comic to look for or how to get started. And you're worried that maybe the person is more interested in selling you comic books than helping you actually start being a collector. So this video is going to cover all that is going to cover what kind of comics you need to look for, uh, what kind of covers you can look for, and so on. So let's go ahead and like Thanos, let's snap to it. Welcome back. You gotta love that Thanos snap or we were blipped back. There you go. Avengers, assemble. But anyway, so it's not just the comic, it's or the publisher. Actually what it is, is the characters within that comic that make it popular and worth value. A good example of that is Star Wars. Because Star Wars is known for being part of Marvel Comics, but at one point, and still now in some cases, there's different versions of Star Wars comics with Dark Horse comics, which I think is actually owned by Marvel now or something like that. But for a while, they were their own separate companies, and Dark Horse did some Star Wars comics, and then Marvel got the right to do Star Wars comics, and then Dark Horse got it again. But it's not the publisher that made it popular, it was the characters from Star Wars that made it popular. So... Don't worry about the publisher, worry about the characters. And character-wise, you know, DC-wise, you got Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman, Supergirl, Power Girl, Batgirl. You have a whole shooting match of characters that, with their own standalone comics that are popular. And then you have the Justice League, which is all of them together. Likewise, Marvel. You got Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America, The Falcon, Hawkeye, Incredible Hulk, She-Hulk. The list goes on. And they have their own standalone comics, and then they have the Avengers, which bring them together. And you have those different comics. And in Image Comics, of course, you have Spawn is a very well known for Image Comics. The Walking Dead, very well known in Image Comics, etc. So you have the publishers, but you also have the individual characters that make those comics popular. But then sometimes those characters come together in what they call crossover events or crossover comics. And here's a very good example with two of my favorites. You have. Batman and Spider-Man crossover. And this is one of the few Batman crossovers that I have another one somewhere where Batman and Spawn work together as well. But because these are my two favorite characters from both, Batman's my favorite DC character, Spider-Man's my favorite Marvel character. So I decided I want to go with this one. And again, on the screen you'll see the prices for the grade of the highest grade, which is probably going to be about 9.8 on average, the highest you'll ever see. Very, very rarely will you come across a perfect 10 for a comic. Majority of the time, you're going to find 9.8s. So anything from a 9 to a 9.8, the grade is going to be on the screen for that because that's your best ones. But you can go through the comic book guides and find grades for the other uh, grade values and prices for those. But anyway, so this was a very good comic. I enjoyed seeing my two favorite characters uh, come together to fight off a villain in here. And if you kind of notice in the background, they had the bat signal, but they have the spider web around the bat signal, which is really, really cool. I like that little attention to detail, which adds to this comic to me. And like I said, this is definitely a very good comic. And a lot of comics will also tell you who the artists are. And if it doesn't say art by, you can find out on the inside, it'll tell you who the artist is and who was the um, director, who was the script writer. But they're always, will always usually be up here on the cover too, so you can tell. And so you got Marvel, you got DC. So this is a very good one for you to go out there and find. And from right now, from what I can tell, even with the movies as popular as these two characters are, this comic is still kind of low value right now. So it's definitely worth you going out to try and find. And you can go find it online, or you can go to your local comic book stores, and they'll be able to help you find it as well for a reasonable price. Okay, so you have that, where you have your crossover. Now you have your special covers. Now you have different kind of covers that will have a design on them, such as maybe a tombstone where there was a death in the family of the character, or there was a death in the comic of a main character, a supporting character. And here's a good example. The Amazing Spider-Man number 400. Try and tilt this so you can actually see the emboss. It's got Spider-Man right here. And right down here it says, A Death in the Family. And I think this was just before the Back in Black where he wore the black suit again. But this is a, an example of a special cover, emboss cover. It's kind of like a tombstone cover. And this is one of the few you can get like this. And it is definitely worth trying to find. 
and they actually engraved the artist name right here which is really really cool so and i like the embossing of it and i like the spider web on the tombstone and everything it's really really cool comic it's the amazing spider-man number 400 i highly recommend this is one you definitely try to find if you can for a reasonable price now something else to give me a second here i gotta move something to look for in comics is you have comic books that come in specialty poly bags and they'll have different covers i have two to show you one is very well known it is the death of superman and this one is one that has the blood coming down the s and it is still in perfect condition sealed inside that um and if you can see like this little raising right here what that is is there's actually a small poster on the inside so everything is still in this comic and then you have one like this that just has a character on it doing something and this comic is actually for green arrow but it's harley quinn's harley's little black book green arrow and she's writing in it so it has a famous character on it which harley quinn is one of the more famous characters now she's kind of become her own character after the movies from uh, suicide squad and uh i think what was it um the second one i forgot the full title it's a long title but you have that and ever since she was first introduced in batman the animated series she was not introduced in the comics first one of the few characters done like this she was introduced in batman the animated series first and then she started getting introduced in the comics in i think it was batman adventures so she's become her own character she's very very popular right now and I'm a Harley Quinn fan. I love Harley Quinn. She's just very comical. But again, these are just two examples of the polybag comics you can get. You had one with Michael Morbius, The Living Vampire. You had X-Force, number one. The list goes on. There's so many examples that I could give you for polybag comics that in the future, if they're still in the polybag and you can get them graded while still in the polybag, well, they'd be worth way more than if you take them out of the polybag to get them graded. And we'll go over a graded comic later. So let's go ahead and get these two out of the way. Okay, so the next thing to go over is uh, specialty comics in the way of their giant size or their special editions so they have more than normal amount of pages. And these are two very good examples. Here's giant size Amazing Spider-Man number one. Now you can see it's a little bit thicker than some of the, than the other comics we were showing. And then here's Detective Comics number 1027 and this was done by artist Gabriel Del Lotto and this is actually a artist uh, variant cover it is not a typical variant cover but it is considered one because a different artist decided to do this one and this has got Batman versus the Scarecrow very very good artwork on that one I love the realism of it and then of course my favorite Spider-Man is always going to be a good one and anything with spider-man right now is definitely a gopher including offshoots from spider-man which we will go over a couple of them later but of course that's venom and carnage and agent venom and anti-venom etc and the list goes on from there but these are definitely two that you can go out and try to find at your local comic book shop maybe online but i would if you try to do online i would definitely shop around to get the better price for them because you don't want to do like ebay where they're trying to sell this one for a hundred bucks but if you go to a comic shop it's 25 dollars. so you you need to shop around when you try to find it online but try your local comic book store first they will be the ones to be able to help you find them for a very good price and will hopefully not screw you on the price majority of them won't majority of them will try to help you out so now you have another thing with the covers that you can find and that is a cover that shows a character pregnant which not many covers do there's very few here's one for spider woman where it shows her uh fully pregnant and in the comic it's kind of funny because she has a like a force field around her stomach to protect the child and it looks kind of weirdish in the comic but um it is definitely a type of comic cover that is not seen that much you will see them very, I think there was one in uh, Wolverine and the X-Men where Shadowcat was impregnated by the Brood, I think is what they're called. And you have one with Quasar where it shows a male pregnant on the cover. And I think total there's a few comics that mention pregnant characters, um, but they don't really show the characters pregnant. There's very, I would say there's definitely less than 100 that show characters pregnant on the cover. 
So if you find one like this with Spider Woman or somebody like that, definitely try to pick it up because it will be good to hold on to in the future. And I don't know why it's uh, almost taboo to have a character pregnant on the cover, but inside the comic, they'll show them pregnant all the time, but they're rarely pregnant on the cover. So Spider Woman, number one, is definitely good because it shows her pregnant on the cover. And like I said, there's a few others. So if you can find those, these are definitely worth trying to pick up to save for value. Now, earlier you heard me talk about a possible variant cover. So here's one that is a variant cover, and most of them will say variant cover right there or somewhere on the cover. We usually say variant cover. This one is for Justice League number 49. And again, you can see the artists, uh, the script writers and stuff are all right there on top. And this is for the Justice League, as I said. And this is different than the regular one that comes out. And when I went to the comic book store, they didn't have the regular, but they did have a variant cover in, so I decided to pick up the variant cover because, again, they are definitely going to be worth more in the future than the regular cover most of the time. Now, something else with a variant cover you need to understand. Variant covers can also come in limited covers. Now, there's a few types of limited covers. Well, really, there's only two, but a limited cover can be one of two ways. One, it's limited in the fact that there's only going to be, say, a thousand of them ever printed period. After a thousand, they're not printed anymore. Then you have others that are what they call one in so many. And what does that mean? It might say one in five, which for a retailer, which means for every five of the regular that a retailer purchases to sell in their store, they will get this special variant cover to sell along with them. And the less amount, the uh, or the more the amount, the more rare the comic, because most retailers won't have enough to purchase that many. For example, if it says one in 100, very few retails will ever have that. Because if they're not a very big comic book store and they're like a local comic book store and they're just kind of a small shop, they won't have enough revenue coming in to purchase that big of an amount like some of your bigger ones. And that one might end up becoming known as a comic book shop exclusive simply because only that shop had the amount of money coming in to be able to purchase the amount needed to get that special cover. So you definitely need to look out for those. And another type of cover you need to look out for as a variant cover is these. They're plain. Now, you might be thinking, well, what good is a plain cover? Well, these are made for a very specific reason. This is made for collectors to take to comic book conventions to go find the artist if they're at the convention and like, hey, will you sign my comic and also draw a character for me that's in the comic, like Batman, Superman, what have you. And that is an original drawing from them that, again, grading-wise, you can get the autograph graded and the sketch graded, and it will add to the value of the comic, which is why they started... I can't remember when they started printing these off. I want to say it was about 2016, maybe a little sooner. They started printing off a lot of these blank ones just for that reason, for people to take two comic book conventions and to get it signed and a sketch put on it by the actual artist. So definitely take a look at these if you want to get into comic book conventions. Try and get some of these when you can and take them with you. And again, sometimes, depending on the artist, it can get a little pricey if you want the sketch. Most of the time, the signature is between $40 and $60, but the sketch can run you $100, $120, along with the autograph. So... Definitely keep that in mind, depending on the artist and their popularity depends on the price. Definitely keep that in mind when you decide to do that. Now, with the blank cover comes one that is like this. This is just called a sketch cover because the only thing on there is the sketch with no coloring. This is also something you can find. It's definitely good in the future because this was also added for... I wouldn't recommend doing this, but if you wanted to take your own stab at coloring the characters in, how I would suggest you do this, take this, make a photocopy of the cover, and then put it back in the poly bag, and then try to color it in yourself. Do not use the actual cover to color it in. That way you keep this, and it stays original, and it stays untouched, and these kind of covers, I guarantee you, in the future will be worth a lot, along with some of the other variant covers as well. So definitely keep a lookout for those. Now, some covers will have a special kind of coloring to the characters in the cover, like this one for the Amazing Scarlet Spider, number one. And it's just the coloring of Carnage, Spider-Man, uh, 
think that might be Silver Sable. I can't really tell. And then you have Venom down here, and I'm not quite sure who that is down there. I think that's their version of Dr. Octopus. But definitely look out for something like this. And I think this one is still fairly low right now, so I would highly recommend trying to get this one. And it's definitely a really cool cover. And also, I forgot to mention earlier, you have some that are newsstand edition. You have direct editions as well. That means a lot, too. And usually a direct edition is, is direct to the retailer. Newsstand is about like it says, like maybe a Walmart or a Barnes & Noble, something like that. So you definitely need to keep an eye on that. And if you can find direct editions, those will be worth more than the newsstand majority of the time, depending on the cover. So this one, I think, will be worth more than the newsstand because that is really cool uh, coloring for the characters, and I really like it. So I do think this one will be worth more than the newsstand. So along with other special covers comes usually something that they put on there like a sticker or something like that. So I got a few, two examples. One is this one for the Sensational Spider-Man number zero. And again, you see that giant size special. And it says the legend begins anew. So it's kind of like introducing a character, but it's really not. It's like Ben Riley as Spider-Man. So, but if you see the sticker, it, I can't remember what they're called. I think they're called action stickers or something. But basically, if you turn it certain ways, spider Man's doing a different pose, a different action pose, and what have you. So this is another kind of cover you can look for to try and get into comic book collecting. And anything with Spider-Man is definitely going to grow in value because he's very, very popular. And you have others like Moon Knight's coming out in the next phase of Marvel uh, TV shows and movies and so on. So if they're going to be in a Marvel movie or a TV show, you might want to start looking at those comics as well because Marvel uh, Cinematic Universe, whether it be for a TV show like on um, Disney Plus or in the main theaters, is going to make that character blow up and people will start looking for it. So Spider-Man is definitely a big one. Uh, Kate Bishop now becoming Hawkeye. Her issues are going to start becoming more popular, etc. Et so definitely look for these. The other one is Holographic. You get these holographic stickers on there, which kind of give like a 3D-ish look to Spider-Man as he's swinging. And this is the Spectacular Spider-Man number 189. And this is also a 30th anniversary special edition along with this. And it is definitely worth trying to find if you can. The better condition you can find it the, uh, is always best. And if you want to get it graded yourself versus paying for one that's already graded, that might be more savvy for your wallet. But definitely try to get some of these that have these stickers. And there are some of these that have gold stickers, silver stickers, stuff like that. So you need to look for that too. And ask the uh, person you're going to purchase it from if at the comic store, like, hey, what sticker is this? Is this the gold sticker or is this the silver sticker? Because I know that this one has different stickers. And it's usually how it looks. This one, I think, is the silver sticker. Because when you tilt it up, it has more like a silver hue to it than the gold hue so I want to say this is the silver but it looks really really cool with the way it uh, has spider-man 3d ish in it it's very very good so if you can find these and I know DC had several of them especially in the Robin comic book series so look for these as well and they will be very good for your collection and then you have uh, other specialty comics as well that the entire cover except the character is holographic and this is Venom number one lethal protector and if you've seen the Venom movies, he's becoming more and more popular now, especially because of the movies. But you can see like the holographic w red webbing and stuff. Now, I do not have this one that I'm about to talk about because it's so, so rare. There was a printing error that this background, I think, was black instead of the red. And I think there's another one that it came out in gold. But the, the error one is heavily sought after. So if you are lucky enough to find the the error background cover and I want to say I think it was black but it's been a while since I've seen it or even looked it up but if you can find one that has that error background definitely hold on to it if it's not graded try and get it graded in slab to protect it and that will be worth a lot of money in the future because right it is extremely sought after right now to the point I think it's in the thousands um, if not it's definitely 500 plus so it is definitely sought after so if you can find the error background definitely get a hold to it but this one alone with the red one is being the original print is one you also want to get a hold to. All right. So the next one is another specialty book that you want to do. And it is uh, when, say, sports teams or something 
crossover with a character. And again, this is Spider-Man with the Dallas Cowboys. I think there was only four of these. Uh, not four of this particular one, but I think there was only four in this set. I think there was like one through four. So if you can get a hold of these, they are definitely worth getting a hold to. Uh, they're a little hard to find because not many people actually knew about them or collected them. But it is definitely worth if you can find it. And I don't think they did this too many times, but I do remember, I think there was one or two that had Kiss as a crossover into the comic and so on. But I found this one and I was like, oh, I definitely have to have it. I'm not a Cow Dallas Cowboys fan, but being a Spider-Man fan and with a, a crossover with an actual NFL team, definitely I had to have that for my collection. All right, so something else to be look on the lock lookout for is autographs. So with these... You have an autograph right here by Charles Soule, who is actually, I uh, do not think that was the artist for this one. I think he was the script writer or something like that for that one. This one, however, is signed by none other than Niels Adams. And this is his uh, special variant cover. You see right there, Neil Adams variant cover, and there's his signature right there. And this is his version with Batman Superman of his Green Lantern number 85 cover that had Green Lantern, Green Arrow, and the Speedy was actually the one shooting up the heroin. Now, something to notice also in this cover, in the Green Lantern cover, because they are very, very specific of what you could and could not put on covers at that time with censorship, this one actually, if you can see right here, actually has blood on the needle. The Green Lantern cover did not have blood on the needle. So that was a kind of a little added touch as well, thankfully, that they put on this one. And right now, I uh, put the link down in the description below for you guys. N Neil Adams has his own website, and... For a limited time, you can actually send in comics to get signed by him. I think it's, it's $60. Or he has these on his website where you can actually buy them already signed for the same price and they'll mail them to you. I don't know how long he'll be doing that. So if you want a comic signed by Neil Adams, now's the time to jump on it. But definitely keep an eye out for comic books and comic book shops that are signed. I got this one at my local comic book shop. And I think when I got it, it was only $8. And they were like, oh, yeah, we don't really care about it being signed or not. And I was like, well, I do. So I, I bought it. Okay, so we were talking about Spider-Man. And something about Spider-Man you're going to want to look out for is the Black Costumes comics. So basically, any Spider-Man comic that has him in that black costume, especially with Tom Holland's uh, Spider-Man getting ready to have Venom brought into it as well, if you watch the latest spider-man movie no way home you kind of got that hint with the after credit scene that suit is going to blow up and the next spider-man game is going to have venom as well along with black uh black suit versions of all the suits so once those drop these are going to just blow up even more so and again that's uh estimated grade of a 9.4 for this comic web of spider-man number one and the amazing spider-man number 252 again these prices are down here and you can see that if they were graded what their value is right now and it is amazing just how much that suits popularity increases the value of the comic now this one is definitely a one you want to find this is an original there's what they call a facsimile comic where it's reprinted and you can tell because usually it'll have the actual price of today's comic like three dollars or whatever up here and sometimes it'll say facsimile or it'll have a big circle or whatever but there'll be a, usually a way to tell. Sometimes on the inside, on the cover, it'll say facsimile comic. And I have a great facsimile comic I'm about to show you. <clears throat> but the original is what the price is for. And I don't have the facsimile, so I didn't put that one up. But just to show you this original, you can see the price on the screen. It is amazing just how much that original comic bumped up in value once they introduced the black suit number one because how popular it was it's a really cool suit it's one of my favorites and it's been a fan favorite for years and then on top of that when they did the sam raimi unfortunately it wasn't a very good suit but it brought venom into the spider-man cinematic universe and then they tried to do it again with venom standalone and now that venom has had two successful standalone movies and now that he's about to be introduced into tom holland's spider-man universe I think you're going to see these really take off in value, so I highly recommend you try to find them where you can, and again, try to go through a actual comic book retailer. So, what I was talking about with graded comics and a facsimile, this is a graded facsimile 
of the Amazing Spider-Man number 101. And as you can see, it says still $3.99 because it is the facsimile, not the original. And this one, I was able to get a grade of 9.8. And this is the facsimile of the very first appearance of Michael Morbius, the living vampire in comic books. And this also has a uh, Spider-Man, sorry, just like a string or something with the extra arms before he became the man spider so it's definitely a really good comic and this is one of the comic book companies i suggest you get grades through cgc you can see their sticker right there really really good slab and it is definitely worth getting them slab to maintain that and even these facsimiles at a 9.8 in the future i think are going to be very hard to come by so if you can find one as a 9.8 now i highly recommend getting it i think uh, again, the price for this one is on the screen. And facsimiles are really low value right now, so they're very, really worth going after. And I would highly recommend this is definite one you want to add to your collection. And then the other one is a example of a CBCS 9.4 graded. And this one is the death of Robin from Batman. Now, a little history on this one for those who do not know. The death of Robin was Robin, of course, was killed by Joker. And it was Jason Todd, and he later became the Red Hood. But what many don't know is for it wasn't just decided, oh, we're just gonna kill Robin off. What they did is in one issue at the very back they said, send in your vote to let Robin live or let Robin or have Robin die. The fans voted to have Robin killed. That's messed up. <laughs> but it shows you at the time how many people did not like Jason Todd. They liked Dick Grayson as Robin, but of course Dick Grayson finally grew up and he became Nightwing. And then after uh, Jason Todd was cut off, then came in Tim Drake. So, but again, this was by CBCS. It came in as a 9.4. And they're a little cheaper than CGC, but I do recommend these are the top two I would recommend. If you want to get a autograph comic graded, I would say CGC because it will have higher value than CBCS. But if you just want to get them graded graded, like this one where there's no autograph or anything on it, CBCS is definitely the way to go. They're a little cheaper and a little faster to get back. All right, guys. So that is my video on my suggestion and how to get help you get into comic book collecting and what comics you might want to look for so if this video helped you out please smash that like button and definitely share the video on your social media to help bring more people to the channel because maybe you have another friend that might be trying to do the same thing and get into comic book collecting they just don't know where to start so i highly recommend this video and hopefully it helped you out again please share this on all social media platforms to help the channel grow and help bring more people to the channel and help more people understand how to start getting into comic book collecting and to keep going from there. I appreciate you guys. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you on the next video. Until then, it's been your favorite penguin, the Penguin Air, signing off. Happy collecting and later.